in Pretoria East. Just a small introduction. I am a violinist of the past 24 years. I started when I was about four years old. My mother was a spiritual woman and she decided when she was pregnant with me that I would be a violinist. And fortunately, when I actually started the lessons, I did like the instrument, so I stuck with it. Now, I did end up doing lots and lots of performances growing up and I studied music, I went to music lessons all my life so I've been around the block and when I was a teenager I started playing in churches which started teaching me um, the difference between a classically trained person and a person who just plays on feeling. So what you just heard now was an improvisational piece which means that I had no I didn't prepare anything before I started playing, I just played what came to mind. That is how I play these days because I play in bands. Um, I do not play in any orchestras at the moment or nor do I do still do any classical training after I finished my degree. But I meet up with other local musicians who play other instruments and we just do projects all over Pretoria and South Africa. I've even been to Mozambique with a bunch of tours. Today I am going to be showing you a bunch of different violins and explaining the, what they are and how they're made and what the differences between them are. This one that you see here is a little, I call her my monster. She's a small acoustical violin, well actually she's a full size, but she comes from Chechnya. Now originally I bought this from a person who just wanted to get rid of it, so I paid about 500 rand for it, and then I decided to sand everything down. I cut out the sound holes, I even gave it some sound holes for the musician. Some guitars these days also play sound holes at the top so that the musician can hear a bit more clearly. I covered it to give it a little bit of a French polished look. And I also modified it to be a five string instead of the standard four string that violins come in. Now to show you what a regular violin looks like, this would be a full size. They come in all different sizes uh, so that children who are very young can also learn to play. Their arms just aren't long enough to reach the entire full length of a body, much like acoustical guitars also start with smaller sizes. They are typically made from spruce tops and maple back and sides. Now this can actually differ, if you want a lower quality instrument, they are available, but they have laminate tops and laminate sides and backs. So they are not made of um, sturdy or strong wood, but they will do the trick if you need to start learning. A high quality instrument would typically have the spruce top, maple back and sides, and then they would have an ebony fingerboard. The rest of the accessories are exchangeable. You can, for instance, upgrade the chin rest, the tailpiece uh, to a wooden one. You can get better fine tuners, which are these guys. You can get a better bridge. Um, most bridges are cut from maple, but some are just better quality than others. These are made of offcuts. 
And then the pegs you can also exchange. Um, the ideal would be ebony pegs. As these ones are either made from boxwood or rosewood. Uh, a lot of people are scared to touch a violin. Um, they see it as some sort of sacred thing that should never be harmed. However, violins are built to withstand quite a lot. The whole system on the top is a bit fragile or a bit more fragile than the body because it's held in place with tension and only tension. Unlike a guitar that has actual mechanisms bored into the body itself to keep it in place. This whole thing is held together by just the end pin knob and the pegs at the back and the bridge in the middle. That's all that's keeping the top in place. Now, just for interest sake, they can go quite small. In South Africa, the typical smallest size you'll find is a 16th. Now, violins can go from full size, three quarter, half size, quarter, 16th, and in some countries, as small as a 32nd. Now these are typically, you can start a child off from about two to three years old, which is very young, but some countries, they just seem to have mastered the art of teaching children that young to actually start playing. Let me show you the bow. Bows typically come with horse hair or synthetic hair, although synthetic hair is a bit rarer and more expensive since mites don't go after it and you don't get the typical wear and tear on them. This is horse hair. I've had this hair on here for quite a few years now. I don't play as much since the pandemic, so I don't wear and tear my hair as much. Now, the top the bow tops can actually be round or octagonal. This one is round. So you can see there are no sides or edges to the bow. Back here is what we call the frog. This is a compartment in which the hair is kept in place. And the top also has a little compartment that keeps the hair in place. They're kept in place with wooden wedges. Now this is a little knob that you can turn to adjust the tension of the hair to go either tighter or looser. This is important because a lot of people when they start out they don't realize that they need to release the tension after they've played so that they can so that they don't warp the wood of the bow. A lot of people fight about how to the bow you get different styles like the French and German style or even the Slavic style. I'm not going to go into details about those now but just know that through history many people have held the bow in different ways so there's really no right or wrong way as long as it sounds good. As with guitars you also get electric violins. These come in a variety of shapes and sizes which is fine because they don't need the whole acoustic body to produce sound. The sound is produced pretty much just from the pickup. They typically come with a compartment at the back. You can plug in headphones. Um, you can plug it into an amplifier. It's got the volume and tone knobs, just like with an electric guitar. And you also get different qualities, but the qualities will vary based on what pickup they use and typically how it's built, if it's symmetrical and so forth. Also, if it's comfortable, electric, electric uh, instruments tend to be much heavier than acoustic instruments. So you do have to carve away some of the material that you would typically not do on an acoustic instrument because it's light. So at shops, you can expect to pay between 2,000 to around about 30,000, depending on what you're looking for, for any particular violin. They could come with cases, without cases, with bows, without bows. 
we would recommend for a higher quality instrument to be a second hand handmade violin just because masters in the old days used to make them really sturdy they have certain features that they installed on violins that factories do not do today and those features really make a difference in the sound those could be the varnish it could be the purfling it could be anything on the violin that they installed or inserted that is not done with typical manufactured violins today these violins are made to be played by beginners and broken and they're made with different types of glues and everything. Interestingly enough, a lot of vegans have a complaint that they can't play the older violins because they were made from a certain type of glue made from animals. So it was, it's quite a modern dichotomy that people feel they want to play an instrument but it's not made according to their own moral compass however there are alternatives i myself have developed a glue made from um, rosin which is what we use to put on the bows comes from trees but if you mix it together with a bunch of other ingredients it becomes really sturdy and it's a durable glue that acts much like high glue or the animal glue that luthiers used to use. So there is an alternative for those of you who are concerned about that. Right. And that's a basic introduction to the violence. Thank you.